If you have already heard about Roland, it might be for music instruments, or you might have seen their cool products for the AV and broadcast industry. They lend us a V60HD product so we could integrate it with the LiveFly, and that's what I will present you in this um, video. And first of all, what is the LiveFly anyway? That's one of our popular switcher surface products. It's the most flexible, small, um, switch a surface that you'll find in the product range of Skahoy. It has OLED displays all over the place basically so that it's super flexible. You'll often see it shown with ATEM switches, VMIX and TriCaster systems. We have made a number of videos for that. But in this case for the Roland V60 HD and that just shows you how flexible this product is because it was a matter of configuration to make it work with this device. So if you look at the live light, it had this section of buttons for input selection and um, parameters you want to set. It has encoders as well if you prefer encoders for setting parameters. It has also a section with a fader and a transi transition LED bar, cut auto, fade to black and shift buttons. Those are fixed labels so it means that the product is in a sense mostly useful for vision mixing and maybe not so much for PTC control because where's the joystick on it. Anyway, it's just super flexible and you'll see it in this video because of all the displays makes the button just change functionality with the press of a button. So, uh, guys, what are you doing? I mean, the Roland V60 HD already has Surface on it. It has buttons and knobs. I don't need your product to control this one. And in a sense, it, it might look like that at a glance. But it turns out there would be a number of reasons why you want a second panel working with this switcher product. and. Also, another reason is that Roland actually has a rack unit product with the same processing power inside, which is just called XS62S, and that product doesn't have any surface you could put uh, nicely um, uh, in a master control room, for instance, on a table in front of an operator. So while the V60 HD is super cool for being a, an all-in-one unit, sometimes you want that same power in your rack, and that's not where you want the operator to be. So for such as the XS62S product, which has buttons on the front and have the same outputs and inputs on the back, that product is really in need of the LifeLive panel. That's what I think. In this video, we'll be looking at it with the V60 HD though. And let's get started. There's a lot of ground to cover. So first of all, I just want to show you that when a controller like this is connected to the firmware application on your computer, there's a button online configuration you can press and it will take you online to a, an overview where you can see which default configurations you can use. And you'll see that Roland V60 HD already has a configuration. So it's just out of the box, you click that, you update the firmware and it will run with the same feature set I am showing you in this video. So that's super nice. Let's get started. If you look at the product here, you'll see that in the uh, main screen, we have access to the, to the uh, inputs over here. So let's just confirm as I'm pressing buttons here, you are seeing the same thing is changing over there. If I press and hold, by the way, it is selecting, uh, it's basically making a transition or selecting on, um, let me see if we do this. It's selecting the, uh, the preview row, and if I'm pressing and holding, it is supposed to swap these two. Probably I'm a little bit confused because the picture and picture one has been enabled. I'll just disable that. And by the way, you see the screen output here. That is not true. Let me just see. I need to start recording on this one. Ha, ah, bummer. But anyway, there we go. So now it's, we are recording the screen. So now you see the screen output of the V60 HD as well. And unfortunately, I have only a media bank, so you'll have to deal with uh, some pictures only for the, the view. I'm sure you'll understand that. Now, um, if I hold down the shift key, nothing is happening in this case, but we'll see that in just a moment. You also see up here we have um, DS key, <laughs> DSK, downstream keyer, uh, on and off. So, um, and it even shows you when it's doing the transition. Now, um, if I want to have a preview of my DSK, you can see that was the reason why I didn't see anything because I need to select something for the DSK and I can do that on this four way button. So as I press the side, you'll see the DSK source is also cycling. And uh, let me get to something that could be, um, you know, this picture will be possible to see. Yeah. So you can see, I, I see the preview. I'm turning this on and off. And uh, then when, when I press this button, you'll see the 
DSK, the downstream key, come on, and you even see when it's transitioning. You can set transition rate, so if you want it to go um, uh, slower, then you can set the transition rate on this four-way button. That's neat. Uh, by the way, this transition rate also affects the auto transition you have over here. And then cut, of course, is just a clean cut. Um, this, this knob is not what you think it might be. On most products, this would be the way you can make a transition. This product, as we have been able to implement it, will not allow us to control the transition position. So we needed to map it to something else. And what we did was mapping it to audio. So you can see the VU meter right here, which is showing you the master volume, is actually adjusted by the volume fader on the LifeLi. That's the first. I think we haven't used it for audio before um, in any of the default configurations. If we move on, you can see we have some parameters for downstream Kia. So obviously the downstream Kia right here would normally be a logo or something else. You just saw it it um, mix on a, a another source from, from it, but you have level and gain, which you can set to do keying and things like that. Those are parameters you already know from the surface over here. Now let's move on because we have, um, no, wait a second. I'll just show you transition types. On this four-way button, we can go forth and back between the transition types the system has, like wipe. So we do a wipe. Uh, let's just reduce the transition rate a little bit, so like that. Okay, so we have a quicker wipe. We have wipe number two. We have a, let me see, mixed transition like that on the auto. So that's what we are setting with this key. So far, so good. Let's see if fade to black actually works. Yes, it does. Thank you. And, uh, oh, one thing I haven't covered yet, the brightness. If I'm turning down the brightness, this is really just panel brightness. And something you'll appreciate if you're sitting in a dark room with the equipment. If we move on to the next menu, U2 is the button we used to change the state of the controller. Or uh, you might have other words for it. It's like a menu, so I now page onto the composition menu. And it gives me a different view of these buttons up here. Notice I go back here, these things basically change. So in composition menu, I have access to my picture in picture. Notice as I press this one for picture in picture, it corresponds to what I get when I'm pressing these buttons. So these are basically toggling on and off picture in picture modes. And then, uh, I don't know for whatever reason, but when I press this one, I just get a split screen right away. But that's how Roland did it. So that's corresponding to this over here. Now, um, if I have a picture in picture like that, and um, I should be able to, to do this. Let me see. Um, okay, guys, I figured it out. It's simply because I had the DSK on uh, preview already. So, sorry, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's go back to the uh, normal menu. By the way, if you want to go back to the normal menu, you just press the lower edge of this button. Now, I had uh, my preview turned on for the downstream key, which is the reason why I didn't see the picture in picture. So, I'll go back to composition mode. And now you see, I am enabling picture in picture. I have those two different modes here, this one or this one. And if I want to adjust the position of the picture in picture, I can use these rotary encoders to do it. You see, um, this is the course adjustment. If I press it, it's gonna give me finer adjustments. This is Skahoy style stuff. When most encoders, many encoders, are set up in a way so a click on the encoder will toggle forth and back between course and fine mode adjustment of values. Okay, so I can set the position of the picture and picture put it in the lower corner right there okay and i can tweak it like this okay perfect and then um let me see cut it on cut it off let's move on auxiliary is the auxiliary outputs now this is where this panel is a great supplement to the v60 hd or it might be the the quick bar from Skahoy, which is a panel with only six buttons, basically like these buttons. And you might want to hand over a panel for the auxiliary output to someone else. It could be your PDC operator. So in those cases, it would be the Skahoy controller like PDC Fly or PDC Pro, where the camera selector also selects the auxiliary output on the V60 HD. That's a great application. It could also be someone else who is controlling your iMac 
image magnification, the, the, the big screen you would have in a church or a conference room where you want to see the video feed or the slideshow or similar stuff, somebody will sit there and control that. It could be the auxiliary output of this device while everything else was uh, made for streaming and recording. So changing the auxiliary outputs, done with these buttons, you can see how the changes are reflected also on the panel. So that's the same kind of thing. But now you can hand it over to someone else main operator here, the iMac operator over here. So that's a nice thing. If we move on, now we have the audio tab. We can do a lot with audio in this device and the device itself has an integrated audio mixer with XLR inputs and we can control all kinds of stuff about that. So all these buttons are now mute buttons for the audio inputs for the analog sources. You can see that uh, I'm currently having an analog source going into the switcher over here. So this analog source can be mute muted while I'm muting this one. And uh, for all my video sources, I can also mute the inputs from the video sources if I want. Now, this is where you can hold down the shift key. So when I do that, you'll see that I'm now in solo mode. So solo means that I can now select these sources to be output for my headphones, for instance, and that is available to you when you hold down the shift key. Same goes for auxiliary, and I think this is the master. You can uh, mute over here when you hold. Oh, that's not affected by the shift level. So this is muting master, should fall down, yes, and this is muting auxiliary input. So um, we also assigned these two knobs in this case to audio levels. So what you see is uh, auxiliary out level is adjusted by this encoder here uh, in a value from 0 to 10, which is a floating point value. And then here we have the, the master output level. Well, in a sense, this is really redundant because you can see that it's actually showing you what is the audio volume from this fader. So uh, in a way, we just mapped it there so you have a way to read out the, the audio volume of the fader. If we move on, it's now audio volume. So with, with four-way buttons, you can do so many things. It's super great. And in this case, we can now adjust the uh, audio volume on the various video input sources. And that's something this panel won't let you do unless you um, hike into the menu over here and access all kinds of stuff in there. But that's available on the buttons. Holding down shift gives you access to even more complex stuff like digital gain. So here you have digital gain parameters and you need to find your glasses to get uh, a good view of these things. Uh, maybe you can see it on the video, but it doesn't matter too much because this is like a detail settings where you can, you know, get a little closer to the panel to read the numbers. But it's really cool that these OLED displays, they have such a high resolution, so you can have both clearly readable numbers like you see right now, but you can also uh, show much more detailed information in special cases like this. Um, yeah, let's move on. We go to now the preamp gain. And in this case, uh, let me see. No, we don't have any shift level that affects it. But we have toggling on phantom power on off on these sources. And obviously, when I'm toggling phantom power on something that doesn't have any input, it seems like it's going to read out. And oh, that's nice, isn't it? Small VU meters on the LED bar. So this is the main LED bar for VU metering, but we still have a um, full RGB, three LED RGB LED bar. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So they, they are just super hands, uh, um, uh, super useful as confidence monitoring for your audio sources. And that's how we mapped it right here. So even though I don't have any audio, you can kind of guess that it will show the audio levels of any input that you had. You can adjust the, uh, the head amp uh, parameter on these knobs up there and that was phantom power on off. Finally, we get to the preset menu. And if you know this product, you also know what presets are. So presets will be recall and storing of settings. So you can do that on these buttons right here. You can, for instance, save preset eight, and you can also, by holding the shift key, load presets out of the system again. And that is the conclusion of our integration with the V60HD switcher from Roland. Keep in mind that the XS62S is the rack, rack version of this one. And in that case, the LiveFly panel is probably your best friend to access all the features of that one on a distance. <laughs> <laughs>